The main points about safe medication storage are storing medications in a secure location, such as a cabinet or a lockbox, avoid common, easily accessible storage places, keep the medicine in a cool, dry place, keep out of reach of children and pets, be sure to store the medicine in its original container with the lid tightly attached, and keep, the, keep it updated with a list of all prescription medications. Remind kids to never take medication unless a trusted adult gives it to them. As they get older, you can begin talking to them about the concept of addiction and other dangers of medication misuse. You can share with them the negative effects medications can have on physical appearance, academic performance, and overall health. Ensure your kids know your expectations around medications as well as alcohol and other substances. Keep communication lines open and listen to what they're saying and experiencing. In addition to the conversation, be sure to model medication safety by practicing safe use, storage, and disposal. So the biggest takeaways for parents should be, just because it's a prescription doesn't mean it's safe for everyone. Home medication safety is important for not only substance use, but suicide prevention as well. It's also important to keep those lines of communication open. Talking to them at dinner, talking to them in the car, they may not always want to listen or open up, but them just knowing that you're there will always help. When it comes to prescription medications in the home, we actually like to take a three-tiered approach. We want to talk about proper use of the drugs, uh, proper uh, storage of them, and then proper disposal if you don't need them anymore. Prescription drugs are meant to help us, but oftentimes we see that they can become a harm to not only ourselves, but also our community and our loved ones. So when we're looking at prescription drugs, we really want to tackle um, not only looking at it from a prevention side of drug misuse, but also uh, suicide. As we look and we see that 90% of people who uh, abuse prescription drugs actually had started and had their first exposure to them before they are 18 years old. Uh, medications are the most common method of non-fatal suicide attempts for all ages and both sexes, we found. With really young kids, we have found that the best thing you can do is actually just practice proper role modeling of medications when it comes to use and storage and disposal. If they're aware of how much they're supposed to be using, they don't want to think, oh, you know, a little is good, more might be better. Uh, I even, with my own kids, when it comes to even vitamins, they're those gummy vitamins, they're like candy, they want to eat them all the time. I tell, you know, no, we have to follow the recommended. Of course, it seems unfair that my three-year-old can get only one and my six-year-old gets two, but that is what it says on the container. So yeah, we found with with young kids that as long as they're around an adult who is helping them understand and you're kind of modeling, you want to be, you want to set the pace for what's going to happen, you set the expectation for what's supposed to happen in your house. Uh, cleaning out any unwanted, unneeded, or expired medications is actually our primary defense in preventing not only accidental overdose, which can happen, but intentional misuse of these prescription drugs. So uh, we usually tell people that there's three good options to use in our county for these, these drugs. The first one we push them to is that we have drop boxes located at several local police stations, the sheriff's office, some other locations. Uh, you can check out the links to find the one nearest you. Now, if you can't make it to a drop box, we also have a couple other options for you. Uh, we have found some people are leery about going into a police station, depending on the person, although they are anonymous um, and they're monitored, so you can always make sure you're safe there and everything. But we also have uh, drug take back days. Typically we have one or two a year. Now the pandemic kind of threw that off, but we're gonna be getting back into them. So watch for updates about that on Facebook. And then lastly, we actually have these drug deactivation pouches that we distribute uh, to at different events and things like that. And they're really handy because you actually, there's different sizes for how many pills you have. They have some chemicals in them that actually will deactivate the drugs if you add water to them and kind of shake them around and get them all. And then you can just throw them away with your regular trash. So that is the most convenient one. We have limited amounts of bags, but they really, um, we try to have an option for all types of people because we understand some people don't like law enforcement or you know, there's barriers to getting there. They might not have transportation to get there. So we try to reach people where they're at. We have found also that um, the Environmental Protection Agency, they recommend incinerating the drug. So that's what happens when we pick them up at the location or even if you take them to an event because they've said that the uh, wastewater treatment plants aren't equipped to take out the medications 
whenever you flush them, which is what they used to tell us to do with drugs. And also, if you throw them away and you haven't ground them up or something, they're still retrievable. And we don't like to encourage people to throw them away because someone might still come across them and they could still get into the water supply. So the incineration is what's recommended these days. Um, for sharps, I know a lot of people want to bring those to our collection events, but there's some issues with that. Luckily, in Ohio, as long as the sharps were generated in your household, you are legally allowed to throw them away. However, we do recommend you do a few things to keep your waste handlers safe. We recommend that you get a really rigid, uh, puncture-proof and like it can't leak container. We kind of recommend a Folgers container or a laundry detergent bottle or like a thick, like a, what lemonade comes in. Uh, and then once it's like three quarters of the way full, if you're someone who regularly has to use like needles or sharps, you can seal it with the cap it came with and try to do your best to tape it shut and then use a permanent marker to actually write on all the visible sides of it that it has sharps inside. Because again, this will help the waste handlers not get punctured and potentially even get infected if what you were dealing with was infection. So that is the best thing to do. Now we, uh, you need to put it in your normal trash. This is something that belongs in the trash. Do not put these in the recycle bin. They cannot be recycled and again they will pose a serious risk to the people who sort the recyclables at the waste facility. Uh, whenever we are talking about pills, we're talking about, like a good example for me is after I had um, a cesarean section with my first child, which was not planned and not fun, they send you home with a bunch of pain pills and it's good to use them at the beginning because you really need to. However, then I'm left with a random amount of pain pills and I don't need them anymore. So that's really what these drop boxes are for, things like that. Or if you, uh, you're, you get a loved one's house, someone passed away and now you have all their prescription pills, they're expired, what are you gonna do with them? This is a way to keep them out of hands of people who might accidentally, like a small child who might take them or a pet or something, get into them or someone who might intentionally want to use them. The Safe Home campaign was created in partnership with the Suicide Prevention Coalition. It's kind of an overarching prevention campaign. Um, we wanted to let people know that there are so many different ways to protect your family from all kinds of different things. I mean, when they're young, you know, you put outlet covers on and protect them from sharp corners. You teach them about personal safety. But keeping your home safe also includes knowing about the warning signs and risk factors of substance use and suicide. Um, so part of the Safe Home campaign is really just educating people on some of those things to look for and to be aware of and to really reassure that you can prevent these things. And, you know, while we really can't remove all the risk from your home, doing these things will really help make your home safer. So we wanted to make videos for the Safe Home campaign in addition to our webpage and the printed cards that we have out in the community because we wanted to take the opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into each of the topics on the card. So today we're talking about making your, making your home safer in regards to medication use. So the main messages regarding safe medication use are first, making sure you're talking to your doctor or your pharmacist when you're prescribed something. Know what the dosage is, know what the possible interactions are, and just really just in general, know how it can affect you. Second, you really want to recognize and realize that the medication that is prescribed to you is done so because it is for you, your body, your history of whatever, and that really should not be shared then with anyone else. And, you know, it may be tempting, like, you know, if, if your son or daughter is, you know, got injured somewhere and you have a leftover Vicodin or something, you're, it may be easy to think, hey, you'll feel better if you take this, but that's really unwise because, you know, they might have an interaction that you don't know of. And really you don't wanna get them in the habit of doing that either. So ultimately, I mean, you don't wanna share your medication with anyone. You don't want to take anyone else's medication because again, it wasn't made for you. And you wanna, going back to the personal safety piece, you wanna do things that are safe for you as well. Another point would be to make sure you're taking your medications as prescribed. I mean, again, know the dosage and know if there are things you're supposed to avoid taking it with or if you are supposed to take it with food. Um, and really importantly, never mix your medications with alcohol because there can be a lot of unknown interactions with that. Please visit the website on the screen for more talking tips.